What up, yo? It's the Daily Decrypt. Welcome to Currency Competition. I'm your host, Amanda, and today's episode is brought to you by Node40. When we heard that there was a new mobile app coming out to compete with the likes of Uber and Lyft that would also enable drivers to accept cryptocurrency for payment, we had to find out more. Here is Christopher David from Arcade City. Well, Chris, tell us who you are. Give us some framing, and I, and I have an inclination that your framing will have something to do with the term illegal Uber driver. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I drove for Uber um, for a couple of months um, in uh, late 2015. And let's see, got into a couple um, tussles with the local law enforcement here in Portsmouth uh, because the city Portsmouth council, where? Portsmouth where? Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, the city council passed this law that basically made Uber illegal here. Um, so I continued to drive and was very uh, vocal about that. Um, Got into some legal troubles and, and um, ended up starting this kind of activist campaign called Free Uber, where we organized um, about well a, a bunch of different drivers and connected about 40 of them together in this Facebook group and did some um, various activism things together. And in talking to these drivers, um, you know, a number of them, they're big complained or were passionate about the government regulation side of things. But what I found was that even more of them were pissed off about the treatment of uh, of, the, of them by corporate Uber, uh, feeling like they were not being listened to. You know, I go to these driver meetings and just seeing the uh, leadership just kind of ignore really awesome ideas. And I just can kind of been turning over in my head the possibility of maybe like making a decentralized version of Uber on the blockchain at some point. Um, and got, it got inspired to actually like pull the trigger on this when I saw um, – a few days before uh, New Year's Eve, one of the major taxi companies was threatening to pull their cabs out of Portsmouth to the neighboring town to protest the fact that the city council and the police were not cracking down enough on Uber drivers. I guess they wanted to see our, you know, dragged out of our cars and beat to a pulp on the side of the road. I don't know. Um, so that could be, really. You know, this would be an awesome time to um, organize some drivers together and give out a bunch of free rides. And um, yeah, why don't we just say that this is the soft launch for this new uh, uh, decentralized ride sharing service. Um, obviously didn't have any of the code done or anything, but wanted to kind of test out the basic idea of getting a bunch of drivers out on the road, um, you know, testing out a dispatch system, testing out the concept of giving free rides. We gave free rides because that was, that let us kind of get around this, this um, ordinance. Uh, that, you already did this. You you already had a soft launch, and this was on New Year's Eve. Yes, yeah, and that got picked up by the Associated Press and broadcast out nationally. Just got a ton of coverage for that. Um, so we kind of put up a, a website um, saying, okay, you know, we're going to do an actual launch of the app on Valentine's Day, February 14th, and we set a goal of recruiting 100 drivers by the end of January to help us test this out. And we were planning to launch in Portsmouth and maybe a couple other cities around New Hampshire and, and maybe some cities um, outside of New Hampshire. And um, we ended up signing up 100 drivers per day. We're at 1,600 now. Uh, it's just blown up absolutely massive. We have a lot of inbound interest from people who want to join the team. And so it's just, it's evolved into this much larger thing where it's like, oh crap, people actually expect us to like compete with Uber now. <laughs> So yes, let's let's figure out how to do that. Wow. Okay, so you have sixteen hundred drivers in the queue for and tell us the name of the app, Chris. Arcade City. Arcade City. You have sixteen hundred interested drivers in the queue for Arcade City, and you have you're planning to launch the downloadable mobile software this Valentine's Day. Now, tell us the cryptocurrency tie-in because, because the payment system here, the, the whole process is very unique. Tell us how that works. Yeah, so we're doing the bigger crypto integration starting in the spring. Uh, we're going to be integrating with the Ethereum blockchain. In the beginning, we're integrating payments with Stripe. So people can pay in Bitcoin from day one if they want to. Um, we are kind of just getting out the door with something very simple. Uh, just a basic mm -hmm. app and Angular, like, you know, standard kind of, of app technologies tied to a database a a as usual um, with the intention of, like, getting some 
funding or revenue that we can then hire some professional developers who can really look at the, the Ethereum integration, really plan out how to do that. But you know, th there have been other projects that have tried to solve this issue of how do you build ride sharing on the blockchain. Um, mm -hmm. and some, some pretty cool attempts, uh, uh, but they didn't really have the, the growth hacking element of it down, where just being able to put something out that can attract a crap ton of drivers and be able to articulate that rationale to those drivers of, hey, this actually should be a completely decentralized system and have people get that, but want some kind of specific things in the short term, like the ability to set their own pricing. That's the big issue right now is that Uber has, you know, centrally central management of pricing. So if you're driving 40 hours a week and that's feeding your family and that you come to rely on that and then overnight, which they did um, on January 8th, Uber cuts rates in like 100 cities up to 40 percent overnight with no warning. And now your pay cut is like it, your, your, your take home pay is decimated. Um, you have a lot of anger, a lot of anger by Uber and Lyft drivers. Lyft then follows suit after Uber. Um among drivers who are looking for an alternative, something that's not going to, number one, treat them like crap, and there's no really way to treat them like crap because we're decentralizing that pricing decision to the level of the driver and the customer. So you okay. can earn your own pricing, charge whatever you want, and you can build up your own recurring customer base. So we've got kind of a combination of you know things that just people would like to see in terms of being able to be a little bit more of an entrepreneur and not be you know slave to Uber's whims while also like, hey, this is actually a model that really works for the blockchain tech. You know, it would be nice to get this completely decentralized. In the meantime, in the beginning, it won't be, but we're going to mm -hmm. get there over the coming months. Okay. Wow. So that was so much information. Let me clarify a few points for myself. So A, the Arcade City mobile app will be integrated with the payment processor Stripe. And you're telling me that Stripe natively accepts Bitcoin? Yeah, it's just you flip it on. It's like a option that you can turn on optionally. But yeah, Stripe, Stripe takes Bitcoin. Okay. And then uh, with drivers and their individual riders being able to agree upon uh, prices just for individual rides, is that something that can be agreed upon within the app, uh, like as the customer is ordering the ride? Or is that agreed upon in person verbally? Or how do you imagine that might work? So there's there's two kind of payment modes. Um, there's going to be peer to peer mode, and then there's going to be gamified mode. So peer to peer is people can use this app just as kind of a communications platform to connect rider to driver. There's going to be a rating okay. so system, just, like basically just like send a message, like I'm interested in a ride. Are you interested in giving me one? Yep. Okay. Pretty much, and yeah, you know, there will be a rating system, and you know we'll vet that drivers have you know pass a background check, just some basic kind of checks. Um, you know, right now we're only allowing Uber and Lyft drivers onto the platform because we know that they've been through a background check process. We don't have the money for our own type thing. So that'll be like a little thing on their driver profile. Hey, you know, they passed through this process. So there's going to be certain like, you know, vetting things, but, but drivers are going to have a profile. And when a rider goes into, let's say they want to do a pre-scheduled ride and they want someone to take them to the airport three days from now, they'll put in a ride request and then they'll, it'll match that to the availability of the drivers. And it'll say, Hey, there's four drivers who are able to take you. Two of them are compliant with all laws and regulations and they have commercial insurance. Two of them are more bandit cabs and they are a little bit more off the grid type thing. And you can talk with them directly. If you're comfortable doing that, they might charge a little less or something like that, but yeah. we're, we're letting people actually like make their own decisions about what their comfort level is. Um, so yeah, they can send them to the driver um, and they can either, if the driver wants to say, look, you know, you, I take credit card payments through the app or I don't, um, they can do that. They can trade in and if they want to trade in Dogecoin, because that's a thing in New Hampshire or wherever they can do that. We, we don't care. So in the peer to peer mode, people can just transact directly and we don't know what goes on and we don't care. Um, obviously we don't get a piece of that. Oh, well, but then there's kind of the gamified rise or payment through the app. So if, if someone wants to connect their credit card and pay to the app, because it's going to be probably a little bit more secure or safe than necessarily trusting the driver to handle that. Then we're going to take the 10% fee, 90% goes to the driver. Um, so it, for a launch, it's going to be pretty basic about like, you know, you put in a ride request, you get matched with a driver. But later on, we want to offer uh, drivers the ability to like set their own pricing tiers, like their own, like, you know, taxis have the like the rate card where it's like, if you know, the first X percentage of the mile goes like this, 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 this. You know, if driver, drivers have said they want the ability to like tack on surcharges if it's raining outside or if they make like a stop. So the idea is for the passenger to be able to put in what their 
um, you know, the route is like, hey, I want to go here. You know, that, that's going to take five minutes and then go here and then have it run that um, route through the pricing algorithm of all the available drivers. So you, you can see, oh, this driver who's a level 10, you know, livery will do it for $50. This driver who is a level six, you know, Agora cab will do it for $30. But hey, he's got, you know, a bunch of five star reviews and people like him. You know, I, I feel good about trusting that that person. So there'll be different tiers and this will all be transparent to, to the, the rider. My goodness. And now will both an Android and iOS Arcade City app be available for this soft launch on, on Valentine's Day? Yep. Yep. We're coding this in Angular and Ionic. So we just, you know, one set of code that we then deploy to the different um, platforms. Okay, so I imagine that people like, uh, namely me, are completely salivating over this idea of, of, of being able to use this app to actually get a ride somewhere and pay not only maybe in Bitcoin, but perhaps whatever form of payment the individual driver agrees to take. Is there a way that I can find out uh, if Arcade City drivers are available where I am at any given time, like on Valentine's Day and, and thereafter? Yeah, um, so when you download the app, you will see when you log in, it'll like tell where your location is and it'll say, you know, there's 10 drivers in your area. Um, some dri Now some drivers will be like, they'll be in the system and there could be a driver who lives, you know, like, you know, half a mile away from you and will say, hey, you know, there's, there's a driver close, but they're not online right now, but you can message them. Or if they're drivers who are online and you can then, you know, those are going to be the people that if you want an instant ride that they'll be able to take you. Now, in the beginning for the for launch where we are more emphasizing the pre-scheduled rides um, because the, the live real-time hailing that, that requires a little bit more of a you know, balance of supply and demand that might take a while to um, emerge. Based on the level of um, drivers kind of signing up and some drivers really taking the initiative and recruiting other drivers in their areas. I mean, there's there's some cities, Fresno, California, I mean, there's like, we have like 70 drivers there. So live real time, live real time hailing might work from day one there. Um, but you know, we have, you know, a couple people who've like taken a lot of initiative. They, someone already hosted a meetup of drivers in Fresno, California, like last week and like three drivers came, like we haven't even launched the thing yet. We're not paying any of these people. So it's, it's <laughs> awesome to see all this like decentralized, just people taking, um, initiative, but let's say there's no drivers in your area. Let's say you live out in the boonies or something. Um, but you know, people generally around you might be interested if they knew about this. Uh, you'll have a referral link that if you want to like, click in the app to share that on Facebook, anyone who signs up through your link, you're going to get 3%, not 3%. You're going to get a, a little percent, maybe one to two and a half, one to two percent. We're still working on the numbers. You're going to get a percentage of every ride they ever give forever, the gamified rides with payment through the app. So we have mm -hmm. driver, and, driver and rider referral um, uh, percentage. That's partly how we've been able to grow so fast. It's like, hey, like, not, we don't have this crappy referral program where Uber like gives you fifty dollars after they take thirty rides or something like that. Like we we have no none of the margins. We have none of the overhead that Uber does, so we can afford to pass that on to incentivize the growth of the network. Well, I I have nothing to say. I mean, this is just <laughs> this is so innovative and and exciting, and so I. I guess I would ask you, do you have any final comments? You know, people ask why the name Arcade City. Um, yeah. I, actually, I wanted to call this Agora um, or Agora City, but there is a dark. What's Agora? What's that? It's a marketplace, you know, in ancient Greece. It's where people came to ply their wares. And it was at least my understanding of it. Not, you know, there weren't any like Athenian government people like coordinating it. So it just was people where people traded. Um, so I, I like that idea because what we're doing here beyond just the ride sharing, um, if you're creating a profile that says that you're willing to take a person from point A to point B, you know, here's how you communicate. There's nothing stopping you on your driver profile from saying that you're also willing to do deliveries or that you're also willing to go shovel out someone's driveway. You can list all that stuff on your profile. And if the user wants to reserve you through that same system to do that, uh, they're more than welcome to. So. The, the longer term vision of this is to build like a, a marketplace where people can just transact with each other. Eventually this will be all on the blockchain and we'll figure out all the, you know, identity stuff and, and reputation. So people feel good about, about using this. Um, 
So I, I so I love the concept of an agora. Um, I, but there's this dark web like popular drug trading app that does drugs and just that kind of. So I, I didn't want to use the word agora because it's kind of been taken. So I threw agora into a uh, thesaurus, and the first word that came up was arcade. I'm like, oh yeah, arcade. You know, there's like the arches, but there's like a, it's like a trading ground. And I was like, well, I like the word arcade also because it implies like games and gamification and fun. And we're having like these little like levels where if you're like a driver and you get good reviews, you kind of level up and you can unlock stuff. So we're gonna work on like integrating games and fun things. Like maybe there'll be some games people can play in the backseat. I don't know. So I love the name Arcade City. It just sounds like fun and um, it and it is fun. So that's kind of the explanation of the name and, and where we're, where, we're, where we're taking this. Wow. All right. Well, I imagine there will be a lot of people who will be interested to know a little bit more or potentially a lot more. Uh, so tell people where they can find you and certainly tell people how they can find out if they can take or offer rides uh, starting February 14th, 2016. Yeah. So um, the best thing to do is to follow us on Facebook. We post a lot of um, updates and um, crap talk about Uber and fun jokes on our Facebook page. So that's the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, you can check out our website, arcade.city. Um, I mean, the website right now is like a piece of crap that I threw up in a couple hours. Um, and it's miraculous that we've even had so many people sign up despite that. But we're going to have a new website coming out in a few days. It'll be at um, arcade.city. And um, yeah, if you want to get involved, like shoot us a message through the Facebook page. We'll connect you in. We have a Facebook group of, you know, a thousand people where we're like planning stuff. We've got a Slack channel, all that stuff. So if you want to help us build this, like we're still looking for a couple of developers and people who can uh, help out. So uh, yeah, hit us up. And Chris. Are you going to be driving? Are you going to be giving rides on February 14th and for Arcade City in general? Yes, yeah, I'm gonna stay active driving. Um, you know, that's kind of the best way to get, you know, feedback and see how people are experiencing is to kind of be on the front lines of it. So yes, definitely. All right, well, right on. Well, thank you so much for your time, Chris, and I hope to check back in with you uh, after after Arcade City is, is seeing some action and maybe get a progress report. Sweet. Okay, right on. Thanks, man. It's okay. Bye-bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Node40, which is a hosting provider for anybody who runs a master node in Dash. In addition to acting as a virtual private server, Node40 also enables those with master nodes to vote on budgetary propositions. The first merchant in the world to integrate with Dash's Evolution Wallet. You can learn more about them at node40.com. Woo! Red alert! Take note that the Daily Decrypts podcast doesn't live on SoundCloud anymore. Ugh. It lives on yourlisten.com. Linked in the description for your listening pleasure. Have a good day. So happy together, we're happy.